Hello, I'm Chaotic Shmoo, and this is another Roll20.net tutorial. Previous tutorial, we looked over the interface of the campaign screen, and in this tutorial, we're going to go over the page toolbar. So let's just get started here. In the page toolbar, again, we use, like stated in the previous uh, video, we use the page toolbar to drop down the page toolbar. And now here, you can create new pages, you can edit pages, um, you can change the name of a page to, let's say page one, or start, or whatever you want to name it. Um, you can create a new page, create a new page, let's change it here. Well, this one will be start. That one doesn't deserve to be start. And you can move them. Very easy. Drag and drop, move it around. Um, if you want them in certain orders, the order doesn't actually matter. It, uh, it, it's really more for your personal um, setup and, and ma maintenance and managing your pages. Um, then you also notice I accidentally grabbed the flag here. This flag depicts what page the characters see in the player view. Whatever for flag, whatever page this flag is on, the characters will have it'll fade to black. And then it will come back and uh, show the new page. Um, so make sure you pay attention to what page this flag is on, because if you're trying to edit something or change something, and somebody comes in to update their character sheet, work on the macros, do something like that as a player, and you're in the middle of like building their next episode or campaign, and you happen to have this player flag on the page you're working on, they're gonna see what you're doing. Unless you have like fog of war on or something like that, and they can't see anything, kind of stuff. You have that kind of stuff set up. But for the most part, if it's just a blank starting page and you're just adding stuff, don't have any settings set, they're gonna see what you're doing, and they can look around. So be careful where you place this. Um, going onward and forward. I feel like I'm a general in the army or something. Um, if you notice when I hover over you get two options here you get the page settings and you get duplicate page Duplicate page it does just that it makes a copy of the page Very handy if you need to make, make slight tweaks or if you already have some of the page settings here um, Already set and you don't want to keep setting them up every single time But you do keep note that You notice when I do page copied it it didn't copy over the contents it didn't copy over the text it didn't copy over the token just the page settings very nice so with that let's go into the page settings themselves you click the little gear kind of got him stuff you click the little gear when it appears you get your page settings so your page settings we're just gonna start from the top and go down page size now these are 25 units by 25 units. It says right here, weight and height, one unit equals 70 pixels. One unit is one of these squares. So it's 25 by 25. You can change that to however big you want. I have made a map that is 300 by 300 because I made a massive, massive city uh, for one of my D20 modern campaigns. It was a lot of fun making. You can change the background color of the you save it here. No, so the background color changed of, the, of it. Um, you can change it to whatever you want. You can even enter hex codes. Really cool. Even transparency, which I've never actually tried, but eh, you just get that nice textured look from the background of the of the tabletop. We're just gonna go back to white here. Not that it matters. Um, but before that, you have the scale. So one of these units generally equals it's a default five feet it implies with movement speeds um it's kind of defaulted at dungeons and dragons because from what i've noticed from games i've played five feet each one inch cube or square or unit is five feet you can change that depending on the game you're playing or the size of the map you need it to be if you're in vehicles you might want to change the miles um and then you can change you know i can go 10 feet per square 
It's completely up to you is depending on how you're playing your game. After that, we have the grid. You can enable the grid and disable the grid. Look, no more grid. Um, a fun feature to use because, um, and then you can, you can change the size of the grid too. One unit, two units, you know, you can shrink them down. Um, or expand them, you know, mess with it, have fun, figure out exactly what works best for your setup for the map you're making. Um, I turn, I have turned the grid off and examples are, they went, my, my party went to a location to where I didn't actually, they didn't need miniatures. I knew there was going to be no combat going on. So they didn't need the miniatures. They didn't need a drawn out, you know, map, um, of location and stuff. So I took a picture and I edited it in Photoshop and touched it up, made it all like, you know, graphical, um, instead of just an actual like photograph. And I just put it on here and I removed the grid. And I went, this is where you are. And I described this area and all that kind of stuff. And so having the grid on, it, you know, it threw it off. So I disabled the grid and it looked beautiful. Uh, it's a good, that's just one example of, you know, not using grids. Um, then after that, we have the dialogue, um, or I'm sorry, diagonals, which default is, again, D&D is a fourth edition compatible. It doesn't have to be 4th edition compatible, it can be 3rd edition, it's D&D. It's the the 5 foot 1 inch squares is standard for all D&D, um, as far back as I can remember. But they also have Pathfinder 3.5 edition compatible. I'm not actually honestly sure of the difference, I haven't noticed one. Um, I'm sure there probably is. Uh, but then you have the other versions here. Depending on what game you're playing, depends on what you're going to use here. I always just tend to keep it basic, just default. Um, and then you could change to where if you're playing a hex game with hexes instead of squares, um, horizontal and vertical uh, hexes, again, depending on your playing, you can show the labels for hex games. Um, and then you can change the color of the grid. So we're going to do like a blue CV. Yeah, not bad actually. Um, so if your background or your map you're using blends in with the color of your grid, you can change it so that it stands out more or stands out less or whatever you feel like doing. And then you can change the opacity of the grid. I do this. It's like not having a grid, but the grid is still there. Might be handy if you don't want to show the grid, but you want your character to still be able to move around kind of stuff. Um, or you can do like hardcore heavy on. So I'm going to just make him bigger and the grid stands out more kind of stuff. Um, completely up to you. And then we get to a section of Fog of War. Now I talked about this very briefly in the previous tutorial of the interface. Now you can activate it through the toolbar, but you can also activate it here. You can also disable it here too. So if you've activated on the toolbar and then you want to disable it, you want to go here and uncheck this because it'll be checked if you activate it in the toolbar. The cool thing is, let me activate it here. See now the screen went darker. We go back in here. You could change the opacity. Now it's lighter. Because let's say you're you're in a dark area and you see this. The players always see black if you have Fog of War enabled. They don't see the different opacity levels when you change it. It's only for the game master. The cool thing about it though is, is if you're in like a dark, dark area and your players are going through some dungeon and it's got very little light, but you still gotta be able to maintain the Fog of War, well you can turn the opacity to whatever fits to be able to see the black on black basically. Uh, it's a very, very nice feature. Um, finally, we have, you can archive a page. Can't be on the same page when you archive it. And then you can delete a page. Um, archiving a page, let me come over here real fast. Not that it really mattered, I could have done with a different one. <laughs> I'm clicking the wrong buttons. Here, we'll just do this. We'll archive the page. It archived it. Can't drag and drop in there and stuff. You, you go, it just stays to the end, right? Okay. Yeah, didn't mean to do that. But we'll go here. And we'll archive this page. I can't because the players are on it. So we'll move it over here, and we'll archive this one. Two are archived now, and then you click the archive, and you can restore them whenever you want to use them. 
really, really, really handy for if you have like 20 pages. I mean, like if I just sit here clicking and creating pages, right? I have to go through and delete these all now. <laughs> um, I have to scroll. Mouse wheel doesn't work. I wish it did. Um, you could do universal scroll, which is nice, but otherwise you have to click and hold and drag. And let's say you don't use all these untitled pages. Well, then you could sit here and you can uh, not click that. <laughs> you can uh, go through and you can just archive them all. You know, and then if we scroll down here, you got two archived. And you can restore them again. Very handy feature um, for when you get really cluttered. Or you can go into the campaign features and just duplicate your campaign too. Completely up to you how you want to do it and whatever works best for you. Otherwise, let's switch over here. You can delete the page. Now, just go through and delete them. So that wraps up what the page toolbar is and how to use it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section. You know what to do. Uh, and you should be able to make your own custom pages now to fit your campaign and your maps. That's the tutorial. Uh, like I said, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. You know, what What do you want to build in Roll20 now that you know more um, and you're learning as we go along? What, what's the big map you want to you wanna make in the future? Leave a comment below telling me that. Uh, otherwise, Please like this video, share it with your friends, and don't forget to click that beautiful subscribe button. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I am Kadek Shmoo, and I will see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.